Chapter 9, Solving a Three-Factor Cross Three-factor linkage questions may seem daunting at first, but there is a straightforward approach to solving these problems. We have described the process in Box 9-6, and in this video, we work through a three-factor cross step by step. First, let's read through the problem, which uses data originally reported by R. A. Emerson, an American geneticist. Two different pure breeding lines of corn were crossed to produce a phenotypically wild type F1 that was heterozygous for three alleles, BR, brachytic, AN, anther ear, and F, fine striped. We do not know the order of these three genes or the map distances between them. The wild type F1 heterozygote was then test crossed. The offspring resulting from this test cross are shown in the table here. Given these data, what is the order of these three genes on the chromosome? What are the map distances between them? And what is the interference in this region of the chromosome? Let's review what the question is telling us. Three recessive traits are followed in this cross. Brachytic plants, which have a mutation in the BR gene, have shortened internodes and are dwarfs. Anther ear plants, the result of a mutation in the AN gene, have the male parts of the flower, the anthers, within the ear of the corn. Fine-striped corn, with a mutation in the F gene, has white lines on the leaves. Note that if the mutant trait is not mentioned in a phenotypic category, the plant must be wild-type for that trait. The general structure of a three-factor cross problem involves mating two homozygous parents to obtain an F1 triple heterozygote. In our case, the F1 is heterozygous for all three of the genes, AN, BR, and F. This wild-type F1 heterozygote was mated to a plant homozygous for all three mutant genes. The offspring of this cross were counted and grouped by phenotype. Remember that the homozygous recessive parent in the test cross contributes no dominant alleles, so the phenotypes of the offspring represent the gametes produced by the F1 plant which may result from zero, one, or two crossovers during meiosis. Analyzing the number of offspring of each phenotype will allow us to determine the order of the genes on the chromosome and the map distances between them. The first thing to do in solving a three-factor cross is to count the number of phenotypes seen in the offspring. In a test cross of a triple heterozygote, there should be eight different phenotypes, since the three genes each have two possible alleles, mutant and wild type. If we see fewer than eight phenotypes, double crossovers could be very rare, or some classes of offspring might not survive, so would be absent. We would need to determine which phenotypes are missing before we go further. In our case, we have eight phenotypic classes, as expected. Now, we need to list these phenotypes in descending numerical order, as shown here. As we look at the reorganized data, we notice that the phenotypic categories that have a similar number of individuals are related to one another and form a pair. Since these are actual data taken from Emerson's work, the number of offspring in a phenotypic pair may not be exactly the same. For example, there are 355 plants that have the anther ear phenotype but are wild type for the other traits, while there are 339 plants that are brachytic and fine striped but wild type for anther ear. We can determine the linkage arrangement in the F1 heterozygote and therefore its parents by finding the most frequent pair of phenotypes. Remember that the parental combinations will always be more common than the recombinants, so the pair that is the most abundant has the same phenotypes as the original parents. This tells us which alleles are linked on the same chromosome, but not the actual gene order. In this case, the most frequent pair consists of plants with anther ear alone and those that are brachytic and fine striped. We can label these parental phenotypes. Therefore, one of the original parents had the alleles AN, BR+, F+, while the other parent was AN+, BR, F. We can now determine which gene is in the middle by finding the least frequent pair of phenotypes, which result from a double crossover during meiosis, making them relatively rare. In our case, the least frequent types are brachytic alone and anther ear and fine stripe together. We can label these DCOs for double crossovers. Compare these phenotypes to those of the most frequent pair. Which trait differs in these two groups? The gene for this trait must be the one in the middle. 
In our problem, we see that fine striped was originally associated with brachytic in the parent, but is coupled with anther ear in one of the double crossover phenotypes. This means that the F gene must be in the middle. We can now rewrite the linkage arrangement of the F1 to reflect this information. AN, F plus, BR plus, over AN plus, F, BR. It doesn't matter whether the AN or BR gene is on the right or left. The important thing is that the F gene is in the middle. When we draw in the crossovers on the F1 genotype, we can see how a double crossover during meiosis gives rise to the least frequent allelic combinations, AN plus, F plus, BR, and AN, F, BR plus, which match our DCOs. We are now ready to determine the map distances between the middle gene and each of the two flanking genes. This step should be familiar from solving problems involving two genes. For each calculation, we will look at two genes at a time and ignore the third one. In this case, a crossover between AN and F produces offspring that are anther-eared and fine-striped, or are wild-type for these two traits. There are 55 plus 2 anther-eared and fine-striped offspring, and 88 plus 2 that are wild-type. We add these together to get the total number of recombinants between AN and F, 147. There were 879 total offspring, so the recombination frequency between anther ear and fine striped is 147 divided by 879, which equals 0 0.167. The distance between AN and F is 16.7 map units. We can do the same calculation with the other two genes. A crossover between F and BR produces offspring that are only fine striped, or only brachytic, but not both. There are 21 plus 2 offspring that are fine striped and 17 plus 2 that are brachytic. We add these together to get a total of 42 recombinants between F and BR. 42 divided by the total number of offspring observed, 879, equals 0 0.048. The distance between F and BR is 4.8 map units. Notice that the double crossover phenotypes are counted in each of our map distance calculations since they have a crossover in each region of the chromosome. Let's redraw our map of this region of the chromosome to reflect these distances. AN is 16.7 map units from F, which is 4.8 map units from BR. Once we have found these two map distances, we can calculate the amount of interference observed. Remember that interference is a measure of the extent to which one crossover prevents the occurrence of another crossover nearby. We know the probability of a crossover in each region of the chromosome, but what is the likelihood that both would occur at the same time? We can multiply the probability of a crossover between AN and F by the probability of a crossover between F and BR, and multiply this by the total number of offspring observed. This equation is 0 0.167 times 0 0.048 times 879, which equals 7. This gives us the number of double crossover offspring we would expect to see among 879 plants, based on our map of the chromosome. How many did we actually find? The observed number of double crossovers, represented by the phenotypes brachytic alone and anther ear and fine striped, is 4. The coefficient of coincidence, c, is defined as the observed number of double crossovers divided by the expected number. There were four observed double crossovers and we expected to see seven. The coefficient of coincidence is then four divided by seven or 0 0.57. Interference is defined as one minus the coefficient of coincidence. In our example, one minus 0 0.57 gives us 0 0.43, or 43 percent. This means that a crossover in one region of the chromosome reduces the probability of a crossover occurring simultaneously in a nearby region by 43 percent. Now we have completed our three-factor cross-question. We have determined the linkage arrangement, the order of the genes on the chromosome, and the map distances between the genes. We've also calculated the interference for this region. Although map distances are generally based on two-factor data, three-factor crosses help us to think about some important concepts, including double crossovers and interference. So it's worth working through problems like this involving three genes on a chromosome.